So, so I think one of the things that I see from your profile that is amazing is this relationship by bringing on board um, many well-known global brands that you've been talking and working with, but as well, all this innovation around companies, startups, and you as well very focused on NGOs um, um, uh, and the innovation, technology, and education as well, United Nations Sustainable Developing Goals. So how can we put this together? Because I think one of the challenges, like you just mentioned, is, and I would like to see, especially in the context of what you're doing with the X Ventures and the, an ecosystem. So you are building a global ecosystem that is unique, both from companies' perspective, startups, and innovation, but as well from people and putting together people, coaching and advising. So how do you do this, especially because at the moment, for instance, you, you mentioned Metaverse, and we could go right now another podcast around that, and I know that we have limited time, but that's really this this uh, so one of the things and and i of course i talk about this on a daily basis in this podcast and, and with my team and the people that i speak and people like you but the challenge we're facing is first of all most of people don't understand these concepts they have a lot of myths and prejudice around these concepts it's actually sometimes quite crazy um or and every time i speak and uh, i think i do research on this every day but i never say that i'm uh, an expert myself, which I could say, but it's more in the sense that I don't have an absolute truth that a lot of people have. And I think the biggest challenge we're facing right now is that everyone has somehow their own definition of social media, their own prejudice of social media, their own prejudice about cryptocurrencies, their own prejudice about decentralized versus centralized. Everyone has an opinion. And uh, and the challenge right now is that it's more increasingly difficult. Of course, the tools are great for us to I did a study and there's more accelerators than ever in history. And people forget that for us. If you just go back, there was a fantastic interview by Tim Ferriss. Just if you just go back 50 to 60 years ago, there was no innovation. You could only have a job mm -hmm. in a big corporation or for the state. At yeah. the moment, or then for your family business. So most of people would have. And I think the point is that if you look at the news, it seems like we are at the end of the world. So how do you go through this, especially when you talk with the startups? How do you kill these myths? And now you really push forward this innovation because this is the key element. And as well, um, how do you build this ecosystem? So they're getting to the you know the the crux of the the conversation, the interview tonight, and probably the most important part. Um, you know, I, I look at tools, I look at technology as you know ways to improve things, ways to enhance things. Do they need to be used all the time? No. Um, should they be? It depends on the business. It depends on the startup. It depends on what they're looking to achieve. You know, is it going to make them smarter, faster, better? I don't know. And until you, you know, look at the pros and cons and have a, you know, a strategic idea of um, where you want to go and how you want to get there. You know, like if you look at any new technology or toy, it takes time for adoption or it takes time for maturity. You know, we're still in the infancy, uh, as I mentioned earlier, in in many respects with blockchain, metaverse, web three. Uh, I do think there's going to be a significant growth, you know, in the next five to 10 years. And I think that's probably because of a few things. One, because um, I think it'll be made more widely available and there'll be better use cases. Current use cases at the moment with blockchain are predominantly focused. Well, firstly, they're focused for, you know, the average Joe, you know, the common person. Um, and so that they can make their, you know, their payments, they own their data, they have transparency, they know that, um, you know, their information is pretty much 99.99% secure on the blockchain. You know, there are some instances around, you know, hacking and other vulnerabilities, but in general, I would say it's pretty much, you know, bulletproof. Um, and so from a consumer's perspective, that's great. They don't have to pay you know, exorbitant fees from their banks to send money to their friends and family. Uh, they can send it when they want. You know, it, it's, it's, it's their people power moment. But then you look at other parts of Web3 and centralized blockchain, which is very much driven by corporations um, and pretty much driven internally for them. And then you have the governments, you know, government and regulations, God bless. Um, you know, they want to monetize this. They, they want to generate more revenue and cash flow from this huge opportunity in front of them. And so as much as people say, well, you know, crypto and blockchain is going from decentralized to centralized. I think 
you know, to a degree it has to. I don't think the end result or the end outcome will be it is now centralised. I just think there needs to be possibly some better processes put in place to protect both the consumer and also the companies. Um, and I say that because if you want to get true adoption, then it has to be ex, you know, accessible uh, at all stages of you know, the corporate world uh, or of you know, the world in general. Um, and so if we want to start talking about uh, you know, going to school and um, paying for your, your lunch with you know, your, your Bitcoin wallet or your Ethereum wallet, that's going to take a while. And I think because, as I mentioned earlier, the use cases aren't there just yet. Uh, the conversations from government to corporates are miles behind. They're not even remotely close. Um, the UAE is obviously one of the most innovative and disruptive regions on the planet, as is London and uh, maybe not Sydney, but you know other other you know capital cities. And they are pushing and they are lobbying governments and they are lobbying their local council to make changes. And what's really interesting is you know you you see a lot of uh, brands like you know Puma or Adidas or Red Bull moving very aggressively into the metaverse space, which is really exciting. It's great to see global brands educating the masses, and maybe it is a consumer-led um, you know uh, rally or you know mission. Maybe they are the ones that have to do this because people trust brands. They've grown up with brands all of their entire life, and so it's, it's quite personal for them. If they're told by the government something about, you know, this is what we're doing, they either don't trust them or they don't believe them or there's something negative, right, in, in that respect. So I think it has to come from, you know, that personal trusted space, which to me is obviously consumer brands would be a no-brainer. Um, friends and family, obviously people talk. Um, but there also needs to be better transparency between, you know, private data and public data. Uh, which again, blockchain can obviously deal with that uh, in in a really good way. So, I think there's still, you know, a lot of gray areas within the Web three space. How they can all get, you know, put properly, like in a, a Rubik's cube, so they're all aligned. Uh, that will take time. That will absolutely take time. Um, but the you know the things that are happening in the metaverse with with brands, as I mentioned, um, is a really good starting point. Um, and you know what's happened recently in the crypto space, again, it's like it's nothing new. If you look at the banking sector, banks go down, banks get bought out, banks get acquired, and then a new bank pops up the next day. That to me doesn't, I don't think, cause any issues for the crypto space personally. Um, the manufacturing, you know, if you go back 100 years, same thing. And I think it's important for the world to have this cleansing cycle and, and this industrial change, uh, as long as the right reasons are supporting those changes. You're completely right. I think uh, the challenge is how we get all these ecosystems together. I think the velocity of the innovation, velocity of technology is, of course, disrupting the way governments see this and as well. They are struggling as well. And I think we cannot just put this outside of the box. Uh, because, of course, it's much more complex that you cannot just as well blame any place. We just need this to create awareness and create ecosystems that can actually protect us, which is what you're doing. 